Good morning, band and choir directors. It is the first day of pre-planning here in Volusia County. I came in a little early to shoot my third video for you. Um, the first two, check them out if you didn't see them. I posted them on the band directors page, the choir directors page, middle school band directors page. Um, so far, I got a lot of great feedback from the, from the communities um, in helping people answer some of these questions that maybe they haven't had and so I'm really happy with that. Uh, leave comments if you have certain questions and as I'm doing the rest of this kind of series over there. Uh, first one was mixers and a little bit about the different types of mixers. Hopefully that'll help you. Second one was some of the cables and connectors uh, that you may see in your sound system and what to do. Uh, this third video we're going to talk specifically about microphones and uh, there's lots to cover so we're going to get right into it. Um, first and foremost, we're going to talk about is if, you know, the question that I get asked, what microphone do I buy? Well, there's a lot of things that can really be factors to that. Um, it usually asks, well, what are you going to do? And they say, well, I just want to record my kids. If that's the only thing you want to do, I would skip everything else we've talked about, mixers, all that kind of stuff, and buy uh, one of a couple options. Um, Blue, who is... Uh, a relatively new microphone company has some really great products in USB microphones. Uh, this is one of them here in front of me. I have had this for several years. This one sits on this microphone stand, but it comes with a little uh, little tripod base, like a tabletop one when you buy it. They're roughly around 50, 60 bucks. Uh, it's USB, so it's uh, regular USB, and then on the back it's got the same as your printer cable. Um, you can run a longer length of it if you need to. Uh, this one just happens to sit right next to my podium. I plug it right into my MacBook. And if I need to record real quick, that's this is a great one. Um, I strongly recommend it. They have a few that are even a little bit nicer um, that are kind of in that 100 to $200 range. Uh, if you're just looking to just record your kids, you don't care about um, if it's, you know, it's an in-class situation or if it's even just at a concert and you just want a good, decent quality, this one's a real, uh, real nice option for you. Um, another option that I would put out there and recommend is uh, made by Sure, and we're going to talk about some of the different brands and what, what, what are good ones. Um, sure makes this, and this, if you're an iPhone user, which I know many of us are, um, this the sure makes this called the MV88. I'm gonna take the windscreen off here, and so this is a tiny little condenser microphone. It's got a lightning port on the back, and what this does is it plugs right into your iPhone. Um, take my case off here because my case doesn't quite fit uh, on this. So it plugs right into the iPhone, um, and you can do it either way. Uh, the capsule actually will rotate so you can get good left and right um, you can even do it the opposite direction so you can video as well and um, it has an app that accompany it you can download the apps free to download um, actually on the app you can control different polar patterns you can control the width of pickup you can control the um, you can control a number of things, and you can record audio directly in there. And if you take video too, it'll pick up video through it. Uh, it's self-powered through the through the phone. Uh, this is about I think about two hundred dollars. This is the best two hundred dollars I've ever spent. True story. I can stand on the top of a press box um, out on the marching field, and I've tested this and put it up there and videotape my the uh, the band, and you can hear the flute solo without any amplification and kids talking from the press box and they can be on like the back hash. Uh, comes with a little case. Great, great, great product. I use this all the time in my classes. Um, I use it when we go to different places to pop in and take some video. Um, this one's really easy. I can just put my phone out, boom, set it right there on top of the, uh, on my podium and uh, take a good audio recording and then boo just take it boom play it right back on Bluetooth to the kids So if, if you have a little bit more, this is a great one pocket size um, Don't have to worry about any of the cables or anything and if you're an iPhone user if you're there are a couple others um, by different companies um, for iPhone as well and iPad uh, That's popular 
So those are some of the quick ones. Um, now let's get into some more of the options that you have and some there. The tried and true is going to be your sure either SM58, PG58, uh, SM57, PG57. That's this guy. Um, this is a standard vocal microphone. Um, the only difference between the PG and the S, uh, SM, if you're unsure, is the toggle switch, the on off switch, which um, if you're in the pro audio world, you usually buy the ones without. These were here. When I have a whole bag of these. Um, I also have one by Samson. It's the same exact thing. Samson's a Sam Ash brand, uh, uh, if you didn't know that. It's literally his son was named Sam, so he, Sam's son. Um, anyway, um, these are great for just vocal talking. Um, you know, you can also use these. I use these in jazz band a lot. If I want to mic like a whole section or if I have multiple solos, I can run all these and I don't have to worry about moving the wireless mic around um, if, if we have time to set up that, that, that. These work great for instrumental solo mics as well. Um, very good option. These are very reliable and very, very durable. This is not a microphone, though, to put on a, on a, on a stand uh, out in the audience to record your kids. This is not that kind of microphone. If you, this is, runs off XLR, it does require phantom power, and you would have to you know, use a USB mixer or something like an icicle to actually get that onto your computer digitally. Um, that's that. Uh, the next would be if you were going to talk vocal microphones or is it would be like a wireless microphone. This is a Sennheiser um, wireless microphone. I have, I have three of these on my campus. One is here in my band room and then I have two in my auditorium. Um, they're all the, this is the G3 I believe. I think they're up to G4. Um, if you have G1s or G2s and they're looking rough, they're, those are probably almost 20 year old microphones and they would have to, you're, you can't get Sennheiser to fix them anymore, uh, so you would have to replace. This is not a cheap microphone, it's about a $700 microphone um, for a wireless system, but they're, I, I, they're very, very durable, I like them. Uh, sure makes wireless microphones and some of the other companies out there make wireless microphones. Uh, they're meant for same thing, voc pr audio presentations, uh, speaking microphones. And they can work good for like a solo and stuff like that too, just to amplify and give a little more clarity. Um, moving on, now we're getting into I want to record my kids. Um, I want a high quality recording. I want to be able to pick them up from the back of the room, uh, the auditorium, something like that, or I, I want high clarity and high detail. Um, and so now your price tags are there, and th that's where we kind of get into a few things. So we're going to kind of turn over here. Hopefully you all can see this well. Um, and if no, I did it in black. Um, oh, beautiful. There we go. Okay. So uh, first things first, these are just a few brands. There are plenty more out there that are all reliable brands. Um, and th these brands produce products anywhere from, you know, the $100 range up to, uh, oh, AKG is another one, uh, up to thousands of dollars. Um Newman is a very, very, very good microphone company, but you can easily pay $1,200 for a microphone. So that's kind of out of most of our school budgets. Um, but again, sure, Behringer, I'm going to show you an example of that in a minute. Um, I have some Rhodes. I have Sennheisers. Um, those are all I own. Um, moving forward, though, when you pick your microphone, you got to pick up a few things, and there's some things to kind of consider in your purchase. Uh, what polar patterns are offered. And so this is kind of think of the pattern of pickup. Um, and so uh, if it's got, and you so, will sometimes be able to select these. Sometimes this is how you set the microphones up. And then sometimes this is, um, you know, a standard pickup that's there. So the circular pickup, that's going to be uh, cardioids, uh, hypercardioids, um, and what that means is, is if I have this standard microphone, if I'm talking here, 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 all the way around this, it's going to pick me up evenly. Um, a hypercardioid would essentially be, 
a much smaller pickup inside of that. And what that means is if I'm talking like this in relative, it's not going to pick me up. I would have to get much closer to it and it would be a smaller pattern of pickup. So you have to think about that in when you're purchasing. If it says hypercardioid, you're not going to be able to put that far away from a student and pick up that solo. Um, then you've got, and I didn't really draw it very well. I should kind of, this kind of comes down a little bit more, more like this actually. Um, that, uh, you know, basically if your microphone placement is here, it's going to pick up behind a little bit and get some more of that reverb as well as what's in front. Uh, you have your figure eight pattern. So again, the microphone would be here. You're going to pick up left and right, but you're not going to pick up directly in front of it. It gets that space, but not there. And most of these are ones we probably, you probably wouldn't use on a day to day basis. This would be when you're thinking about creating a really good recording and have multiple mics and you're mixing things together. Um, and I'm going to show you some demos of this stuff as well. Mounts. Uh, are you going to mount it with a shock mount? Are you going to mount it in a certain polar pattern, let, uh, whether it be just straight left, right, X, Y, and the golden rule. Um, no two microphones, unless they are like instrumental solo mics, for example, like in jazz band, and you're miking every single saxophone, uh, should be more closer than three feet away. Uh, if you're doing anything closer than that, we're going to get some feedback issues. You're going to get some uh, mixing issues, and that's something to consider. So let's show our, do a little demo here. I'm going to try and finish this before uh, the intern shows up for the first day of work. So um, I have here two microphones that I use regularly to record my kids. Um, I have two, two of these. This is a large diaphragm condenser microphone. Uh, this one's a B2. It's made by Behringer. Um, I've been very, very happy with these. I've used these for probably about six or seven years now. Um, one of the first purchases. This one uh, has two polar patterns. You can go the 360 circle or you can um, filter out that backspace. Uh, this one does not have a uh, standard microphone clip obviously is not going to fit into this. So you have to use what's called a shock mount. If you've never seen one before, this is a shock mount. So this would mount on top of the uh, microphone stand. And then this is going to slide in here um, like so. And that would hold your microphone. And the nice thing about the shock, shock mounts is that they will get rid of the vibrations from the floor when you're recording. If you're doing high-end recordings, uh, kids tapping feet and stuff, they'll help minimize that. Um, won't eliminate them. Um, Behringer has a couple different models that are similar to this. This is I use this a lot with my choir groups. They are, especially before we put the hanging mics in uh, the auditorium, they're great for picking up those. Um, I can use two of these and pretty well cover my Choir. My choir is about 50 to 60 kids, and um, I can cover them pretty well. I probably, at, at about 60, I probably should get a third one just to have, but we have hanging mics in our auditorium now, and so that helps solve a lot of that problem. Um, this one also has a couple options on the back where you can, uh, in the selections, um, you can control, like eliminating some of that bass or make it a little less responsive and it won't pick up everything as much. Um, a great microphone comes with a case uh, as well that you can keep everything in. And it comes with a big windscreen, which if you're going to use things outside, that's something to consider is the windscreen. Another one, and this is here, these are, this is by, made by Rode. These are the M5s. Uh, these are small capsule condenser microphones. Uh, they require phantom power as well, XLR. Um, they do come with the windscreens as well. And uh, they come with the clips, which fit in here. And nice, actually really nice microphone clips, I will say. Rode does a really good job with these. Um, easy to move and adjust. 
And so you can also purchase with these what, a little spreader bar here. And this gives you some options that um, are things to consider in how you set up. And I'm going to kind of give you, we're talking about the different ways you can mount these. And so um, this is adjustable. And I, I the adapter I left at home when I took these out this morning. Um, so that right now they're uneven, but you can adjust it. You, when you're mounting these, you can either do them in left, right, like straight on against to your to your uh, audience or your performers, or you can do it in kind of an X Y pattern. Which this X Y, the thing you want to make sure is that the sound is hitting both capsules at the same time. So you would mount it this way. I'll kind of show you the side view there as well, and see one is kind of higher and lower than the other. Um, that's, I have to hold this one on because I didn't bring the thing. Uh, and that is great for small quartets. Um, you can do, give a good stereo thing and only have one microphone stand. Uh, I, I do this a lot for my band class, um, or my band, one of my, my bands, or even just when we're doing the winter concert, boom, stick it on the stand, put it there. Great. Gives me a great audio, gives me a good field of audio across the stage. It'll pick up lefts and rights and it mixes it very well. Very simple. Um, so those are kind of the two, you know, gives you a nice 90 degrees. Um, or you can do um, a closer, but do left and right this way. And you would obviously get these at the same height in that instance. And that's a great for kind of eliminating that center area. Maybe you have some another microphone there uh, and giving you that option. One more microphone that I didn't pull out. I forgot to pull out, but I have it handy, which achieves kind of the same thing. This one is also a Rode, I believe. Yes. Um, and this one is the NT4. Um, and that uh, this one has a unique pin. You have to have a special cable that comes out to left and right uh, XLRs. But um, it does the XY pattern as well. And this is a very nice microphone as well. We use this one from time to time. Um, it comes with the windscreen in the case, and it's got its own microphone thing. And um, again, great for choir. Um, I have used, actually, the this NT4 in the center of my choir and then done the large condensers uh, these guys um, on like the left and right especially when I needed kind of that third microphone we were spread out a little bit that uh, kind of picks up a great field of view for for those kids but um, that's a little bit on microphones and what's there the only thing I didn't really go over was like phantom power phantom power is what powers these um, you, you would draw that from your mixing board. Uh, if you're into some of the higher end microphones, maybe have an external power source, which would be the same as kind of like your wireless microphone has that external power source that's plugged in, and they don't require phantom power, and you can actually damage some of them. So if they have a big box, about yay big, um, that plugs into the microphone, that one, you cannot turn phantom power on on that, which would mean you would need a digital mixer if you're gonna run phantom microphones next to non-phantom microphones because then you can do independent phantom power. Uh, most of the analog ones are global phantom power. Um, hopefully that uh, helped you guys. Again, uh, check out the other videos, mixers, cables, and now we have the third one, microphones. Um, either later today or tomorrow, I'll record the last couple. We did get a request for some troubleshooting video, so I'll probably do that one as well. And uh, thanks Jonathan Brody from New Smyrna Middle here in Volusia County, Florida. And uh, hopefully these help. Leave a comment if you've got a question, and I'll try to answer it. Thank you.